The door gave way easily, and all three of them tumbled out of the freezer at once. Hooray, we're out. June, relieved, collapsed onto the floor. Move! Santa shoved past Junpei and ran straight to the grill, which he immediately grabbed. Ow! Ah! He proceeded to kick the grill in a futile but amusing fit of rage. But where was Lotus? Where is Lotus? It took Junpei only a moment to find her. She was sitting on the counter, idly scratching her chest. Well then, you were no help. Thanks. With a great yawn, Lotus lowered herself off the counter. Junpei clenched his teeth and walked toward her. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die. Oh yeah? But you didn't, so everything worked out alright, didn't it? <sighs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Don't give me that crap. I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here. I'd die too, see? I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the book, but I couldn't find anything. So all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? The Popo could have helped. I mean, they got... Ski-doos. It was true that there wasn't much she could have done. But something about her tone. June picked for his teeth. Fine. There's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? What? You think I'd close the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. She was right. Junpei knew it. Without them, she'd be in a very se serious situation. Trouble. It seemed that an accident was the only explanation for the door's closure. If Lotus had really wanted to kill them, all she would have had to do was bar the door from the outside. And she hadn't. Well, she hadn't done anything. The most she was guilty of was laziness, negligence, not attempted murder. Junpei swallowed his anger and did his best to apologize. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, that's alright. As long as you understand. June Lotus looked away and twirled her hair between her fingertips. His vengeance against the grill complete, Santa swaggered back toward Junpei and Lotus. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Break time's over. Special for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that pad of you always wow. <laughs> Yours while we were freezing to death. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah, how about you put all that energy into something besides giving us trouble? Let's go. Alright. Well, that was fun, I guess. Ah, countertop. Rolling pin and colander here. Nothing useful. Shh. Rolling pins are plenty useful. Trash can. There's nothing inside of it. A little better than being full of rotten food, I suppose. All I've got here is a bottom frying pan. Oh, and a pressure cooker. Well, I guess we could use some of those as weapons. What kind of idiot are you? You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, this is just a joke. Why so serious? Eh. So... Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I don't think we have anything for that. It's only a partition. There's nothing else worth noting here. Bowl! All shenanigans. Nothing in here.
I'm missing something. No, I am. the grill. I was wondering where that was. Let's heat this baby up. So put this meat on the grill. What are you doing? What are you going to do with the paper on the Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's going to burn right away, is it? Just got to keep an eye on it and the paper, paper, yeah, the paper will, will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm going to keep an eye on this pork. Cool. Looks like it's about time. I'll try taking the paper out. Junkie, be careful. Sweet of her to care. I know what I'm. Ouch! See? I told you. Hey, what are you doing? Or even take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. <laughs> so we're gonna have to cut the meat. Yeah, it looks that way. Something around here, right? Is there a knife anywhere? There's gotta be, right? where the cold goes. Oh, it says appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. Oh. Plates for appetizers. Remember appetizers? Appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well excuse me, princess. That's a nice reference. Where are the knives? Got a bunch of stuff written on it, but it doesn't look like code or anything like that. Hey, June Petty, where do you think you're going? I was just thinking I'd check to see if we missed anything in the freezer. Why would we have missed anything? Search that whole place. Our lives on the line, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. I don't need to go back there. Well, I'm just trying to look for the knife. I missed it somewhere. In here? Shove this white cloth on it. Remove the cloth. Ah, I found it. Rusty knife. I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. The knife seemed important, Junpei thought. But it wasn't going to be much use the way it is. It was. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste. Useless. Pointless. Oh. Um. Any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. Oh, we're going to have another lesson. Yes. She wasn't making much sense. Junpei tried to rephrase in his question. Why were you thinking of futility? At last she answered. Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. Again, with the Titanic and you, woman. You want to be Ro Do you want to be Rose? The Titanic. Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Well, I have. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was a novel that had a bunch of stuff in it that described the sinking of the Titanic before it actually sank. Yeah, that's the one. 
The title of the novel is Futility. It was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But, I know, I know. I mean, I didn't know the name of the book, but the story was the same, right? It was just like what happened on the Titanic? Yeah. Well, I heard it was all hoax. Hoax? I heard that the stuff that matched up to the Titanic so well was actually added after it sank. Apparently, the only thing that was the same originally was that the boat ran into an iceberg and sank. But the novel was published in 1898, 14 years before the accident. Like I said, that was the first print of the book. 14 years later, the author heard about what happened to the Titanic. He figured that was his chance, you know? He just went back and changed some stuff in his novel, so that that didn't match the Titanic exactly. Surprised by Junpei's response, Jun seemed rather taken aback. Really? Really? There's no such thing as premonitions or any of that stuff. For a moment, Jun looked very unhappy, more so than Junpei thought was normal for such a discussion. And I depressed her. God dang it. At last, only only a moment. With no apparent reason, she suddenly looked up at him, alarmed. But, 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 that wasn't the only book that predicted the Titanic sinking. It wasn't? Yep. There were two other, similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Steele, who was dead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking st similar similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided, and many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Huh. I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that, it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right. I knew you'd say that. What? What if Stan had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Automatic writing? Wait, are you... Are you talking about that thing where someone says they're possessed by a spirit? And then they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. But Junpei, you said you believed in curses. Come on, that's totally different. Okay, so let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this dead dude wrote this thing. Nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing was about being possessed by spirits of the dead, people. Who possessed him so he could write that stuff? People from the future! It's not it. What's not it? Stan wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. What are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes. 20 years before it happened. He decided it was probably best to say nothing. What June was saying was insane and utterly absurd. If he had tried to take what she was taking ser what she was saying seriously, he'd go mad. Junpei smiled uncomfortably. Well, uh, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But her voice trailed off, and she glanced the at the floor, troubled. Tap tap. Junpei tapped Jun gently on the shoulder and awkwardly reached around her to pick up the knife from the box. Well, I know what waystones are used for. Maybe I'll use this waystone What's going to sharpen the knife. The blade of the knife is getting sharper by the second. I should be able to cut something pretty good with this. Yes. Okay. Mystery of the knife solved. Let's go back to the grill. Alright, now that I've sharpened the knife. Yes, I cut the pork. Awesome, Jupe. Now we can cut out the paper. C plus 10 plus F. Okay, I assume this is for this. Right? For this. An iron oven. Looks like pretty heavy duty. It's probably industrially quality. 
I bet you could cook anything off this. Anyway, let's do it inside. I know it. It's locked. Okay. Fork note. Look at it. That's nothing. Search. C plus 10 plus F. This thing is some kind of code. Just screwing around. Okay, do you know what CNF stands for? I think maybe it means corporate finance. That was clever and funny. <laughs> do I know anything about CNF? I don't think I do. Probably is used for so. Luckily, I have this guide right next to me. This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. Maybe if we put it on the right number, it'll open the other door. Do you think maybe the note you found earlier? Yeah, I know. Do you know how to enter those numbers? I think E is for enter and C is for clear. So basically, when I'm ready to submit my answer, I press E. If I screw up, I just press C, right? All right, let's give it a shot. I probably picked something up, but I don't remember. So I popped up my guide real quick. Yeah, door opened. Good job, Jumpy. That's pretty. Oh. All right, let's get out of here. Yes, I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumbe? Let's get out of here. Yes, let's go.